Hello, it's Only Light Matters here, and today we are going to see how Inkscape and GIMP can help us make iconic shapes for flags and decals. I will also show you how to integrate your work into the game. The aim of this video is not to present how to download and install Inkscape. For this, you will find a link in the description. The idea is more to illustrate how you can design basic shapes with this tool. So what I'm going to do is to make this carbine and moon symbol again. Ok then, this is what Inkscape looks like when you run the software for the first time. Obviously you can notice that the language displayed is not English, because it uses regional settings by default, and my operating system is in French, so French is displayed, because I'm French. We can change the language of Inkscape by going into the Edit menu, then Preferences. You have an interface section, and this is where you will be able to choose English. I advise to do so because, well, this video is in English, obviously, and if you plan, invest time and learn what the tool can provide, you will find many, many tutorials in English, and they are more easy to follow if you have the same UI. So I need to stop and restart Inkscape for the changes to take effect. Now we can tune again the UI in the preferences to get a more modern 2020 theme with selecting both symbolic icons and a dark display. And when it's done, we are ready to go. You can turn on full screen by pressing F11. We are going to make a geometrical shape and the first thing we need is starting from a unit and build a scale based on this unit. If you want to zoom in or out, use Ctrl plus the mouse wheel. So I create a red square, then I duplicate it in dark red. I align both squares, then I build my square of 12 units with additional duplications. Pay attention to the snap modes selected on the right. Now we build our first hexagon with the polygon tool. I choose a blue color. With the control key, I force the hexagon to being oriented by a 15 degree step. I want it to be vertical. I place it center so that it could be in the middle of the side of the first square on the left. When done, I extend the shape with control plus shift until it reaches the half of my scale, which is the sixth unit. Note that we have to set unset the snap settings regarding what we want to do for a specific step. I duplicate my blue hexagon with Ctrl plus D, then I change its color to white, then with Ctrl plus Shift I scale this white hexagon up to the next unit and I put it background. From this moment and for every new hexagon I'll build, I'll send it background. I repeat the process based on the blue hexagon to build a grey hexagon which is two units bigger than the white one. Then, based on the first white hexagon, I built a new white hexagon which is also two units bigger than the grey one. And then we have to build the last hexagon, it's in purple here, to reach the last unit. Ok, now we have three different hexagons in colors. The blue one represents cabin, because cabin is blue. The grey one represents the moon, because the moon is grey. And the purple one represents Minmus, because Minmus is green. Well, actually, you can see that in the map view, Minmus is purple, don't ask why. In fact, colors are not a problem here, because the final image will be in black and white, and I just choose these colors for this explanation. You can also notice that the thickness of the grey shape is twice as big as the purple one. This is because the moon is much bigger than Minmus. There's nothing scientific or precise here. This is just a synthetic representation. In the same way, the distance between cabin and the moon is half the distance between the moon and Minmus, because Minmus is actually very far from the moon. Well, it's not true regarding delta V considerations, but distances are. Now we are going to subtract the white hexagons from the moons, because we want negative space between celestial bodies. The final goal is to get a transparent background. We select the external shape, then the white one, and we do path difference. And we do that for each moon. We can use a test shape that we put in the background, and we can verify we have void space between our moons. 
So now we are going to build the last shapes needed for our symbol. Again, we need to remove a part of the grey hexagon to leave a margin for an incoming new one. Again, we need to remove a part of the grey hexagon to leave a margin for a new shape. To do so, I duplicate four units, I unify them, then I move this new shape so that it covers exactly the grey part I want to remove. When done, select the grey shape, then the shape to be subtracted from the grey one, and do path difference. Now select two units, duplicate them, unify them, and move and resize the shape to make a junction between cabin and minmus. I make a union between cabin and this rectangle, and I sync this new blue shape background. And now I have a decent representation of a human transfer between the planet and its moon. I like this symbolic aspect because, you know, we are so much used to do this journey in our games, I think it is worth to be represented in this flag. The last ship to be constructed is a human transfer between cabin and the moon. To do so, build a new vertical shape, which is two units tall. Extend it a bit horizontally turn the shape in blue and put the center of this shape on an apex of the blue hexagon. Again, pay attention to the snap settings to be activated. Rotate this shape 30 degrees counterclockwise, then we select both blue shapes and make a union of them. The work is almost finished, we select all three shapes and we do path, union. At this step, we save a last unit which will be used as a margin and we can delete the others. We don't need them anymore. We rotate the unit 30 degree counterclockwise, like we did before, and we put the middle of its side on the upper right apex of the shape. The plan now is to put a white disc behind the black shape, because we are going to produce two variants of our flag one with a complete transparent background, and one with a white background for more legibility. To do so, we select the Circles and Ellipses tool, and we make a perfect circle with Ctrl plus Shift. We deactivate some snap settings so that we are sure that the center of the circle and the center of the black shape are the same. And we align them. Some fine tuning has to be done so that our circle is one unit away from the edge of our cabin moon minmus symbol. When done, we don't need the unit anymore. We save our work in a SVG file which is a vector format. That means we can export what we did in any size, it will never be pixelized. To export your work, select the black ships to be exported, then do File, Export, PNG. Mind the checkbox, hide all except selected. And my two cents, if you want your work to last and if you want to use it in games, cups, t-shirts, store windows, whatever you want, please work with SVG file first before doing anything else. It's a more versatile format. In our case, we need two PNG variants one with the white circle in the background and one with a complete transparent background. And now it's GIMP time. The first part of our GIMP sequence is for Nebula decals. As you see, we have nothing to do with the image which has a white background because it's already a square. For the second image, we have to adjust the canvas of our picture to make it squared. Do image canvas size Choose 512 pixels for both width and height, click on center, then resize. And save this image by overwriting it. The second part of our GIMP sequence is for KSP flags. You may already know that flags in KSP have to comply with a specific ratio of 256 pixels per 160 pixels. We will make actually bigger images with a length 
of 512 pixels. So for each image, we do image scale image, then we choose 320 pixels for the height, then we do image canvas size, and we fix a length of 512 pixels. Then we choose a name like flag underscore KMM underscore BG for background.png or flag underscore KMM underscore no BG dot PNG. At this point we are done with image editing, so now we configure the game. And we start with the easiest, the flags. You just have to copy and paste your flag images in your KSP folder slash game data slash squad slash flags and that's all for your decals so i assume that you have already installed the nebula decals mod with second we start with copying our square images in your ksp folder slash game data slash nebula slash decals slash textures then we have to edit two configuration files which are in decals config.cfg and also in decals config curved square.cfg. The only thing to do here is to find a line beginning by textural names. Then we add our image file without the extension at the end, like this example. And when we are done, you just have to save your configuration files and run your KSP. I hope you enjoyed this video, please help me with growing this channel by subscribing, liking or disliking and especially commenting the video. Take care and don't forget to test is to doubt.